Right, in this video I'm going to cover regression. Uh, specifically, regression is the idea that if you have a set of data points or coordinate points, x, y, that whole thing, uh, you can sort of compare them to, or if you graph them, you can sort of compare them to parent functions or what generic forms of graphs look like to see if there's some sort of relationship that's there or as close to it as possible. So let's talk about what the uh, parent functions are first and then it might make more sense. So uh, one of the parent functions is y equals x. It's considered to be linear. If I think my dots sort of approach the idea that uh, they're kind of in a line or they look like they might be making a line or something, I might do a linear regression. Oops. I might do a linear regression, lin reg in a calculator, uh, to analyze and see how close those points are to making a straight line. So basically they measure the distance from a generic form of an equation and they balance out how far it would be off of that straight line to see if it uh, makes a nice uh, linear relationship uh, or close to it. If I have y equals x squared, I have that little uh, parabola thing. Maybe my points start to look like that when I graph them. So maybe I'll do a quadratic regression or quad reg as a button and it'll tell me that hey your points sort of are pretty close to uh, what would be considered a quadratic relationship. Uh, same thing for y equals x to the third power. I'll be doing a cubic reg there uh, to see if maybe the data points look like that in the end of all things. Exponential, in this case you like I wrote y equals 2x, the input, so the x, uh, actually acts as an exponent on a number. So I'll do an exponential regression to see if it shoots up like that one. And the logarithmic function is sort of the inverse of the exponential. So instead of going up like this, it sort of just, it almost shoots up this way over the x-axis. The only weirdo thing about this one is, in most cases, the regression button that you push says LNREG. It means natural log. That's what LN refers to. So um, those are the generic forms. Oh, I should say logarithmic is y equals uh, log sub b uh, x. That's kind of where it all goes. Those are the parent functions. But that's what they look like. So maybe I can take some points and sort of guesstimate around and find out that they're probably this and I can use that information to help me determine future output. That's really what the goal is all about. So um, the thing I'm going to use to make the determination of whether it's a good match is a metric known as either the correlation coefficient which is identified by the R or the coefficient of determination which is identified by R squared. Now what I want these to do, my goal when I'm working with these types of things is I'm looking, or I should know anyway, that either one of these terms that is closer to either negative one or one is a better fit. So the closer to one or negative one positive one now that's driving me nuts a little bit. It sort of look like absolute value. Or plus one, the better the fit. So if you have something that's like uh, 0.98, uh, that's pretty close to one. So it means it's probably, it's very likely that those uh, points that you have have pretty close to a linear relationship. It almost matches a perfect linear relationship. If it's 0.8 or something, the relationship between those dots and that graph is not, that type of graph isn't very good. So say I ran a cubic regression and I got an R value of 0.8 or even 0.90. It's not a very close connection to it, so I'm going to say it's probably not the one I should be using. Let's just do a couple and then sort of move on from there. So um, let me flip out of this. So in this case, I'm dealing with, I'm going to go to number two first, uh, average price of whole milk. Now, in order to do this, I need to realize that, uh, first off, my year value will be my x, and the average cost for one gallon would be y. That's important for me to remember. Uh, now I'm going, it, asks, it specifically, by the way, says line of best fit, which means it's linear, but uh, we'll look at the graph first. I think I already have it. In order to go, you'll need to go to the stat button, and you'll need to go to edit. Now, here's what I did. Most of the time, you don't want to put the actual number of the date in. You want to find a sort of zero point and uh, move it around from there. Often the first number, the, like in this case, the 1998, you'll put as 
zero years from 1998. And then from there it'll be, this is two years from 1998. This is four years from 1998. This is six years from 1998. So really the numbers that you punch in are how many years they are away from the first year. What I did instead this time, just, you know, whatever, was make uh, 2000 my starting point. That way it was easier for me to just match the numbers. Like 2008, I just put in an 8. So in order to adjust for that, I uh, made this 0. So this is 2 less, so I just made this negative 2. That's where these numbers sort of come in for, uh, from. Now, from here, what I want to do is graph it, and just to see if I can get a, a nice look. Before I do that, I need to sort of set the window, because as you notice, the x goes from negative 2 to 8, and the uh, y values uh, do something totally different. So I'm going to clear this out a little bit, and uh, my x minimum, I'm just going to make it negative 4. And then it goes up to around 8, so I'm going to say, how about an x maximum of 10? Now my y values... Uh, my y minimum, the smallest number is 2.6, so I'd say 2.5, and it only goes up to about 4, so let's just make x maximum 4. Now I can go ahead and plot, so I hit second and plot. I want to make sure that I hit, uh, make sure I turn the plot on first off. I'll choose the second one here because it'll give me a nice line between the dots. The first one just gives you the, the points themselves. You uh, make sure that your x list and y list are L1 and L2, and if they're not, change it. Uh, to whatever they happen to be, and then uh, you can go ahead and graph. As you can see, oh, I had something else in the y equals thing. I got to clear that out really fast. So let me go back up to graph now. Uh, as you can see, it mostly has a linear feel to it. This kind of uh, spin here looks a little bit like cubic, but not likely. Um, especially at this rate, because it's not doing it below the line or anything weird. So what I'm going to do is run a linear regression. Before I run, uh, run a linear regression, I need to turn the diagnostics on. The diagnostics allow me to see the correlation coefficient, otherwise it won't give it to me. Uh, so from here, I'm going to hit second and then zero to get me to the catalog, and I'm just going to click down to the point that I see diagnostic on. And you should be able to jump this version of the software that I'm using doesn't exactly move uh, down to the D's very easily. So I'll just go to Diagnostic On, hit Enter, hit Enter again, now it's on. So I can do it. To do a regression, I'm going to go to the Stat menu, go to Calc, and you'll see all the regressions. Uh, I'm going to do Linear first because I think it's a line. So I hit Enter, and then I'll choose L1 and L2. Um, your, may, uh, your software may look different even if you're on the TI-84+. It might just say Linreg and then be waiting there for you. If it does, my suggestion is you follow what I'm about to do now. If you have this version of the software, go down to Store Reg EQ. Because what it can do is save the relationship between X and Y, and you can use it to get your output data, which is kind of important. Now, um, the Store Reg EQ thing, what I'm going to deal with here is um, going to VR, VRS, which is variables, go over to Y variables, and click Enter under Function. Now I can choose y sub 1 as a variable I want to lock in place. And now I'm ready to calculate. So it tells me that y is equal to 0.1027 plus 2.746, that whole thing. Now mine doesn't match exactly to what the, uh, uh, to what the answer choices are, and it's because I did that weird thing with the negative 2, and, but uh, I can figure out pretty much which one it is. Um, 0 0.10 and 0 0.099 are not that far apart and the 2.7 is close to the 0.262 so if I'm doing a, um, uh, a multiple choice it's pretty obvious that the answer is going to be A from this point uh, and except I, I potentially it could be D I guess so I need to run something to tell me. By the way l looking at the correlation coefficient 0.936 is okay it's not great it's not a super tight sort of correlation like I would like it to be but you know, it is what it is. Uh, what they want to know from here is what's the value of a gallon of whole milk in the year 2020? So uh, that would be 20 years after uh, the year 2000. So that's why I chose it the way that I did. Now I can go in and actually find that information. So what I'm going to do is go to variables again. This time I'm going to pick y sub 1. And in parentheses I'm going to put 20 because it's 20 years later. 
hit enter, and it tells me that that gallon of milk should cost about $4.80. Adjusting just a little bit and not very much, I'm going to say that A is the correct answer because B or D says 5.95 and that's not even really close. But what I've done, by the way, is sort of lock in uh, that relationship in the uh, in the graph section so it can actually show me that's where the variable goes. I could also run, by the way, I think it looks a little bit cubic, so I could run a cubic regression, go in and just see what my correlation coefficient is. They told me to use a linear, so that's what I did. But I, you could always go and test and maybe you could find something that works a little bit better. The correlation, uh, the uh, coefficient of determination here is 0.989, so it looks like this actually functions better as a linear, as a cubic relationship, but they want me to use linear, so that's what I'm going to do. But if I had to choose, I would say that this is much better than 0.93, so that's where I would head with it. You know, anyway, on to, um, number two, uh, or number one here out of this set, if I can get it to work. I'm going to go into my list again and go to edit. And this one is a little bit cleaner in terms of the numbers that I'm going to use. And they're also telling me uh, I threw the rock off the balcony. All the answer choices are quadratic, so I'm guessing it's quadratic, but I'm just going to graph it really quick here in just a second as soon as I get it all in. Now that it's all in, I'm going to go into my window again, and I'm just going to make the x minimum negative 1, and the maximum is 10 is fine. Uh, for my y's, I'll change it to around 15, all the way up to maybe 50. And I'm just going to check the plots and make sure I clear this out. Check the plots. They're on. Everything seems to be working, so I can graph it. And it looks like a, a quadratic. It's just a negative quadratic, so it'd be negative something x squared. So that looks good. So I'll go ahead and do my quadratic regression. There it is. I'll choose L1 and L2, and I'll store again. I like to store the variable. It's a good idea, because then I can get the output that I want. And then I'll just calculate it. And it gives me uh, y is equal to negative 4.7x squared plus 25x plus 16. So the answer to this one would be D. Basically it tells me what variables go in front and you just write it down and then it sort of gets you where you want to be. Uh, one more I think and that's it. One that I pulled from an end of course test for Tennessee actually. So in this case uh, they say if the data is modeled by a quadratic equation, so they're telling you what type of uh, regression that they want. So that's the one you should do. I mean it doesn't make any sense to do anything else. So go into your stat menu, edit it out, uh, go ahead and punch in all your stuff. And I'm going to delete some things really quickly, just to sort of make it look cleaner. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Ten, twelve, and I have to be careful to read the whole thing. Uh, it tells me that the one is the number of days of foraging, and the second is the mean rate of food delivery. Which rate is closest to the mean food delivery in milligrams per minute on day seven? So this is the number of days. So what I'm looking for is a point that's going to be like right here. But anyway, I'm going to go over to L2 and do 0 0.3, 0 0.55. Six. And you can see the numbers uh, cresting here and then coming back to this point, so it seems like a sort of a quadratic regression anyway. But the point 0.6 uh, at this end gives me pause. Anyway, now I can go ahead and do my graphs. I'm going to fix my window a little bit, and it's going to be from 0 to about 14. And then I want to do my x or y minimum, somewhere around zero, and then the y maximum. I'm just going to put it one. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and see if I delete out any of this because I remember those be those being there. Go up into the plots. 
make sure everything's hunky dory there and it is so I can graph it this is what it looks like but they want me to do a uh, quadratic equation model so I'm going to use the quadratic regression go over to stat go down to calc quad regression and I do want to log in or uh, max out or sorry lock in sorry my variable so go into VARS click over uh, pick y variables and go to function and pick y1 and then it matches and then I can go to calculate and it'll calculate it for me this tells me the output but I can find the specific information I want by going to variables function y1 and now the relationships there so in parentheses I'm gonna put 7 because they're asking about day 7 so I'd enter and tells me 0 0.606, so 0 0.61, so the answer to this one is D. So that's it for regression. You just want to look at what the graph looks like and then get an idea of, hey, that's where it's all going. Also, I have a video on the idea of if you're just given tables and you want to see based on the tables without graphing it if it's linear or quadratic or exponential. So if you know you need to go there, check that out as well.